Hi, this is Kim White with the My Sexy Business team. And yes, I know you all are probably tired of hearing me about being excited about the next guest, but I am excited. I can't help it. I want you all to know we have a legit rock star on the show today. I know I use that word to describe people in business, but she's like actually a rock star. <laughs> she is um, an amazing entrepreneur. She has founded and has an amazing business in Rock Vision, which she will explain is a, a twist on, you know, rock and roll and ambition. And I am so excited to have her. I do want to tell a funny story real quick because she is a super techie. And if any of you have followed me for any length of time at all, you know, this princess is not a techie. I do my best and I will um, fumble messy through things, but I definitely am not considered a techie. I was having some trouble with the app we use, Be Live, and I am Googling to find out the answer to a problem and who would pop up but this famous rock star who's a super techie giving me the answer. And so I messaged her and she was so awesome because she immediately answered back. But welcome to my sexy business, Miss Nancy Halligan. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here. I just can't believe you said yes to this princess. <laughs> of course. Nancy and I are actually in a class together. And it's so funny because in that class, we all are just basically kind of our names and our profile pictures because we don't really know anything about each other till we get to looking. And so I think it's humorous that I'm thinking she's a super techie. I had no idea about the rock star status. Um, and I'm thinking that I'm just going to have her come on and talk about um, what you could have to pay, like literally have to pay $23 million if you don't know this um, information. I, I thought, well, she's perfect. She's a super tech and she was teaching on it. And so I asked her to come on. And then when I got her bio and found out she was a real celebrity, I was like, oh, and she even said yes. <laughs> It's a little so known tell us your background. It's a little known fact that rock stars are total geeks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So how did you get started? Because I know you were telling me a little bit about that. And I love this part. So I have been a musician my whole life. My both of my parents are music teachers and I got into music from a very young age. Like if you did not sing or play an instrument in our house, you were banished. So <laughs> I got started singing when I was seven. I actually had my first singing job when I was seven years old. And I went from fan of music to performing the music. And then I actually did a few street teams when I was a teenager where I would pass out flyers for other bands. And then I moved on to... Um, becoming an actual musician trying to play on stage, but it didn't quite work out that way at first. So I moved to the back end, promoting and booking and managing and all that, and then finally came back out to the front of this stage now. And in that process, and, and actually in addition to that, I have owned a music venue as well. So I know all the different facets of the music business, and wow. I feel that brings a unique view to it for other people. So I kind of decided I needed to take all of that information and just start teaching people how to use these online strategies, platforms, and everything, because a lot of people are still stuck in that handing out a paper flyer to people, which is, is fine, and it's a good reminder, but the digital thing is can really, really help you, can actually help you make more money as a musician. Oh, my goodness. And I will tell you, you can get... Um just on the, the paper flyer versus the social media strategy, you know, just in the area that I'm in today, because I'm traveling, but the area I'm in today, there are um, 27 million people within like, I think 200 miles, something wow. like that. I mean, it's a crazy number that if you just targeted if you just targeted that area for a flyer online, 
think of how many people that would get in front of. Right. It's, it's unbelievable to think about sometimes. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. I'm sorry. I get excited about it's that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, okay. So you started a business, but tell us, tell us, um, like what rock mission is. Cause I probably messed up how that went. <laughs> So what I do is I, I call myself a creative artist, digital strategist, and I teach musicians in music venues um, how to use those digital strategies and platforms to promote their music and shows so that they can get more people to their shows, get more people buying their music and purchasing like at the music venues. Obviously, the drinks help the, the venue, but <laughs> I wanted, I also kind of have a dream in my head of making not making but helping the musicians and the music venues work together more efficiently because a mm. lot of times it's us versus them and it doesn't have to be that way and it shouldn't be that way because you you really both have the same end goal in mind so <laughs> well you know one of my um one of my things that during this class that we're both in that has come to the surface yet again it's come to the surface for probably 40 years of my 51, but it came again is collaboration. I have such a heart for collaboration and I see that in you that, you know, working together, it, it's, it's that whole, if the water rises, all the boats rise. Yeah. And I think it's super sexy that you're helping, you know, that, that industry, because I, I wouldn't be a good candidate to help because I don't understand that industry. Like, I don't know all the ins and outs like you do, but sounds like you've spent your entire life understanding all of that. I really have. And the funny thing about that quote is I, the first time I heard that quote was from uh, the lead singer of a, a heavy metal band who was being interviewed on the radio. And I immediately took my paper out and wrote it down because I couldn't believe how awesome that quote was. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That makes my day. <laughs> <laughs> well, so tell me what, like, here's the funny thing to me is, you know, to, to do what you do on stage is amazing in itself by itself. If you did nothing else, that's amazing. But to find out you're like the super techie, who is, I mean, you understand things that this princess will probably never understand. <laughs> and you actually, um, we were having this conversation beforehand, but, you know, I speak princess. And so <laughs> I need it in simple. I need it in steps. I need, it, I need to be able to describe something to a techie person who they can understand my language because I certainly don't know theirs. Right. So, you have done something about that, though. You have actually been that that middle translator. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, my day job, the job that actually pays my bills, is working as a programmer. And I got to that point from I worked in a billing office at a hospital. And then I went to a trainer, and I was training the people on the system. And then I became an actual programmer. So in that middle period was where I figured out that, cause I, I'm that girl that's not afraid to push the button on the computer and I have blown a few up, but, <laughs> but I'm not afraid to see what it can do because most of the times there is always an undo button. So <laughs> I figure how bad can it be? So, <laughs> but that's how I kind of became realizing that I, I'm good with like connecting those two pieces from people and not even in just that, like I'm good at, at the tech with that, but like, like with the music musicians and the music venues, I'm good at connecting those two and seeing how people can work together to get something done rather than going step by step slowly. I guess it's kind of like the tortoise versus the hare. <laughs> I don't like going the tortoise route if I don't have to. <laughs> Yes. Well, and you know what? The learning curve for anything we are learning. I was talking to Angie Schumann earlier on an interview, and we were talking about that, that we have to be okay with we don't know what we don't know. Right. And But once we know, then we need to do something about it. And if you can shorten my learning curve, then how amazing is that? Instead of me struggling for five years to try to figure out something that will probably be obsolete by the time I figure it out. <laughs> right. Have, 
have someone like you come in and be able to teach me something simple. I was so, I have to tell you, my, my, um, Proud meter was like flying big yesterday <laughs> when I found you, though, when I Googled for the answer, because it was like, that is an amazing, that's an amazing feeling to know that I actually know you from class and here you are, Show you're helping Google. thousands <laughs> of people. Yeah, it was just like, wow. But you are that person. You are that person that has a lot of answers about the tech issues. And now, do you just work with like rock stars or do you work with princesses or <laughs> I pretty much work with anyone because the whole thing with the music venue is that person's an entre entrepreneur, just like you and I. So technically I work with entrepreneurs and musicians, but obviously like it's best to be speaking to specific sets of people as we've learned to niche down like that with your business. Yeah. Then that's who I specifically talked to now, but it's clear that I reach, I'm already reaching more than, my target audience. Right. Oh, and you're doing a good job. I think they're beautiful. Like the things I've seen online when I Googled and stuff, that was beautiful. Your, um, your pages were beautiful. So I really, I was impressed, Thank you. but I, I do want to address because this is where we started with this whole process of me even asking you to come on as I watched you do a information from all your research about something that's coming up that's going to impact all of us that do any kind of online. Mm -hmm. And it really is a question. I, I want to repeat our like title because this is a true thing. You know, we're not doing this as a gimmick to, it, to it's tell not you. A scare tactic. It's not a scare <laughs> tactic. It really is. Are you willing to pay 23 million US dollars for what you don't know? And that is about the GDPR. Correct. So, so can you tell us what that even means? <laughs> so GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation. And it's, I was shocked to find out that this law actually went into effect in May of 2016. So we've had two years to get ourselves ready for this. And I'm wondering why this is only popping up on everybody's radar, like on May 1st. <laughs> So on May 25th is when they're going to start enforcing the law. So nobody knows what that means yet, which is, I think, a little bit of the scariness of it. Yes. And nobody knows, like, will they just go after the big guns or what are they going to do with the little ones? And who knows? And um, when I went through, I, I don't even have a huge email list, but I do have two separate businesses and I did find someone from the UK on one of them. So I do have to make sure this is taken care of. And the other thing is, is because it went into effect two years ago, it's actually retroactive. So if somebody complains about anything in the last two years, they can come after you for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So explain exactly what it is because you know, there's, there's other, I'm sure princesses out there that need to hear exactly what it means and why it even impacts us. So it's all about data, which we've been hearing about for the last few months. I mean, you've been hearing about it for years, but it's really come to a head with Facebook and the Cambridge Analytica stuff and Mark Zuckerberg going to Congress and all that. And it would not shock me if this comes to the US sooner rather than later. So what it is, is basically how we deal with data. And you should totally have a plan. Um, I do believe one of my links has like a small checklist that I had on my page and I don't have it right in front of me, but you want to um, make sure that you go through this checklist and have all these things done because you need a plan in the background for how you collect your data. What data are you collecting? What are you doing with it? How long are you keeping it? When you do decide to delete it, how are you deleting it? Like, how are you getting rid of it for that person? And having well, that all written down beforehand will help you answer the question if somebody does have something to say about how you collect your data. 
And I want to stop for just a second and give a disclaimer because neither of us are given legal counsel. We are not attorneys. We are not, you know, any of that. This is something that Nancy has researched thoroughly and has helped other entrepreneurs, you know, ask the right questions. Because the truth is, I didn't even know what those initials stood for not very long ago. I had never even heard of that. And with with that being in mind, all the things that she's given you are tools so that you can check yourself before they check you. <laughs> right. So- <laughs> because, I mean, I mean, I don't totally know how it's done over there. But as we know here, like, ignorance is not a defense of the law. You can't just say, I didn't know, and it's all all's good. It doesn't wow. work like that. So the better informed you are, the better you're able to handle it if something does happen. Well, it's our purpose as business owners and as entrepreneurs, or even if you don't have a business yet, it's it's our responsibility to to find out the things that we don't know. And one of those ways of finding out those things is to get connected with someone like Nancy, you know, someone who stays abreast of the the things going on and, and pays attention to the things. I would not have even known to look at this. I would not have even known to, you know, search it out. I would have had no idea. And I caught your live video and thought, oh my goodness. Now we, you know, now I know. So now I've got to address it. And those checklists are priceless because even if I know about it, what in the world do I do about it? Right. And the only reason I actually even started deciding to do it on my business page was because I did a quick check and no one in my industry seems to be talking about it. And as you know, music is like that universal language and people just think they can sell it all over the world. But if you're collecting email addresses, you have to be very careful with that. Yeah. Well, explain it because I loved how you explained the part about like the box, the separate box. Right. So how it works is this is, basically putting the power back into the consumer's hands. So um, what, like when you have those pop-ups for any type of opt-in and I use on my page, cause I cater to musicians. I had said, if you're giving away a song, but if you're an entrepreneur, you have that lead magnet, the opt-in something that you're giving away for free on your website. When that pop-up box comes in, you're going to basically need a, a checkbox that asks people like, do you want to get any other mailing from you? Because when you send them the lead magnet, you cannot just add that person to your whole big email list and like send them your blog posts. And you know, this is for sale this week and this is for sale next week. Like you can't send that to them if they did not opt into it. And that is the other thing is you cannot pre-check that box. They can't opt out. They have to opt in. You have to, basically put it on them to check the box. Now, most people are thinking, oh, this is going to kill my list building efforts, but it's really not. It's going to slow it down. Yes. But your open rates are going to skyrocket because those people want your emails. (laughs) See, I'm with you on this. This, this is something to shake us up, but I will be honest. I have, and, and I guess this is a princess confession, because I have an email address that I don't ever check that I opt into things because mm-hmm. I don't want to be bombarded with a lot of stuff. And so I will get it and I will see what kind of content they're giving. Like if, if it's someone I want to be connected to, I actually kind of vet them through. I go back and put that put a new email address in basically I'm frozen I think you're I think we're actually fine it's probably recording fine can you hear me still can you hear me Nancy All right, <laughs> we've been having so many sure. techies I'm not frozen <laughs> <laughs> I hear you can you hear me let me hang on just a sec.
Can you hear me? All right, I don't know if I should pop out. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Sorry, guys, bear with us. This information is really good, and you're going to want it. Um, if, if you can't, let me send Nancy a message, and we'll both just kind of pop off. Leave us yet, guys. So we are, we are, um, let me message because we're trying to get this worked out so that we don't have, but don't, don't leave the, the be live guys because we're working on the tech tech side of it. Sorry. This just happens sometimes. Um, but this, this subject is so, um, it's crazy how much it impacts us, and we don't even know it's coming. Can you hear me? Yeah, now you are. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, I was just, I was just saying how important this information is to have. So then I'm with you. I, I don't know where we dropped off, but I I second what you said about the the more engaged uh, right. people will will opt in because they we'll give the free gift away. Like we give things away. We will give right. it away. If you don't want to be on our list, that's fine. But if you want more of us and they opt into us, that's what my, that's what I was saying about my email. I have an email that I can find out if I want to be on your email list before. <laughs> so I've already like started doing this in a backwards way for myself. Because I don't want my email address given out to everybody who's going to send me 12 things a day. And I mean, I just don't want any of that. I want the, you know, I want the ones who are respectful of how much they send me. I mean, right. I just, I'm just saying for myself, that's how I feel. And so this is going to be a good thing, I think. And I agree with you that it's going to come to the U.S. I don't think it's going to yeah. be just. You know, and the data talk about data and protection right now and this law, the way it puts things back into the consumer hands. And I'm not like I said, I'm not sure how European law actually works. But like for here, when something's a federal issue, it can take forever to go through like a federal court. But what they're doing is it's like a European Union law, but they're going to have local places. So somebody gets sick of your emails, they can go right to their local office and put in a complaint about you. So I think it's going to happen a lot faster than people think it will because we're used to here where the judicial system kind of takes its own sweet time. But I think it's setting a precedence. And that, I think that that's the, that's the thing that is concerning, I guess, is right. if someone gets fined the 23 million U.S. dollars, for doing that, it's going to be too late for us to catch up because if we're doing the same thing, we better be praying that we're not on that, that complaint list. Right. Because once that precedence is set, I think it will, like you said, go quickly. One thing I would say is I know I have convert kits and if someone unsubscribes, they're technically still on my list. They just show under canceled. Get rid of those people. Just get rid of them and you don't even have to deal with that. So I would just check that maybe once a month or something. Make sure like there's no one, if there are unsubscribes on there, just get rid of them because then you don't have to worry about those people and you won't have to worry about accidentally sending an email in that instance. Um, the other thing is make sure your privacy policy is updated with these. And I did find a new resource since we've, t we've talked. I listened to a podcast episode from Amy Porterfield it's like one or two episodes. It might be from last Monday. And she had an expert on. He actually has a free course. And when you get into the free course, there is a link to a Facebook group that he has. And I've already found some amazing information in that. I highly recommend grabbing that course, getting into that group, because this guy can, and he's a lawyer. He can answer all your questions. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, can you put that in the comments when we get off? Can sure. you add that so that they don't like, I, cause I would love to go check that out myself. Um, I, I think sticking our head in the sand, like an ostrich is kind of how small business owners do a lot of things because it, it's like, we don't know all these things. And then all of a sudden we find out about 12 things we have to do, you know, and they're all big elephants to us because we've never done them or we haven't dealt with it before. And so I always laugh and tell everybody I choke on elephants, like give me steps <laughs> and I can get it done, but I choke on elephants. And so I think this is another instance of really an elephant. You know, if, if we are mindful of our lists, of who is on our list and how we protect them, then I think we're not going to be so far away from being compliant. Right. Yeah. I think it's when you blast everybody, you know, daily or you blast them and they get so tired of you using their information to send to someone else. And, you know, here, I'll give you my 25,000 on my list. You give me your 25,000 and we'll drive them all crazy. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's the way business has been done. Online business has had some of that. I have to say, I don't think anyone in their right mind wants like an email every single day from someone. So I would just say, just treat your, your list like you, you want to be treated. Exactly. And then I don't think you can go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think Facebook, I know that there's going to probably be some rule changes for Facebook as well with this. Um, I noticed several of our third party providers are saying things about it and changing up some things. But, you know, if they opt into Facebook and they opt in, I think there's going to be a change. And this is just my princess opinion. I think there's going to be a change in the groups where you can't be added automatically to a group. Oh, that would be amazing because people do that to me on a daily basis. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, some of them, some of them I like, like to be added to, you know, because I don't even know they exist. But there's a lot of them I get added to that I don't know anybody. I don't even know who added me. Like, it shows me a name that I don't even know them. Yeah. And they just randomly go through and I think take lists of people and that's what they do all day long is just add people so that they have these hundred thousand member groups that nobody even knows why they're in there. You yeah, know, and I, think <laughs> I was actually just considering doing a little promotion in my, my own Facebook group to help it grow is to give the um, members like a contest basically to add people to the group, but not by putting their name in there. Yes. And I'll, I'll put an extra box in my questions, like who referred you and then I'll count them up that way. Yes. Well, and I, I actually went into, um, I have what's called the My Sexy Business Club and it's a private group. And I actually went in there and did a live and actually invited people to opt themselves out. Like if this is, even if you thought it was your flavor when you started, if, if it's not, because it's all really about collaboration. It's right. all really about a certain a certain thing and I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste my time. And so if you're not this, and I gave them a list, if you're not these things or if you're not interested in these things, please just remove yourself from the group. It's easy. You know? And I think that that's a really cool way of, you know, cutting down on, because I think for a while, all of us were guilty of wanting big numbers because we right. thought it was proof that we were doing something amazing. Right. But I can tell you, I lost 10,000 and some followers in a short period of time. And I was never happier because <laughs> they were, they were not really there for anything except to spam all my list. Like they were spamming my, my, um, all the people that liked the page. Right. And so I was glad and grateful that my numbers went down. I don't know if you've had that experience, but I'm telling you, that was. I mean, I, I gain and lose equally pretty much at this point. And I'm actually not 
sometimes I get a little, because I get over like a hump of a number and then all of a sudden I lose like 10 and it brings me back below. It's like, come on. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. But but I do know, like, I do actually say, okay, bye. It's nice to nice to know you because if you're not going to engage with me, I don't want you there. Yeah. Well, and you know, I want to, I just want to, you know, touch on this too. We're not being snotty or, or, you know, high, high and mighty in any way. It's just that if I can't serve you and and then I don't really want you there because you need to go someplace you can be served. Like you need to go where you can get the answers you need. That was um, one of my first videos in our course when I did it the first time. Um, One of my first ones, I did it on my personal profile to, um, get people over to my business page, but it was titled why I don't want you to like my page. (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's very good. And the funny thing was, I think about 60 people liked it just off of that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but that's, I mean, it's, it's catchy, but it's also true. It's very true. And And I think the whole people were all people I wanted there. They weren't fluff. So that was, it worked. (laughs) Well, this law coming into effect, this whole thing of setting a precedent, it really all goes back to um, what I think are sexy business principles, which are treating people, like you said, how we want to be treated, you know, treating them in a way that is sexy, a way that they don't, I mean, if they got opted out somehow, they'd they'd find a way to get back in. They're that engaged. And so I do think this is going to be a good thing, but I do not want to be on that list of getting fined or. (laughs) No. (laughs) So definitely, I mean, we have time still. There's 20 more days, technically 19, because really for the retroactive piece, you want to make sure everything's done. If you have people currently on your list, you want to make sure you reach out to them and get them to opt in the correct way to comply with it before the 25th. So it should be done by the 24th so that when it goes into effect for the enforcement on 25th, you're in compliance and they're on the list or they're off the list either way. Yeah. And you know, I speaking to business owners and entrepreneurs, I think that if they'll understand the good that's going to come out of this, you know, don't be discouraged because I know there are, you know, some friends of mine that have several hundred thousand on their on their pages and then they might take a big hit on that. Like they might right. they might because their page is kind of reflective of what their email list looks like. You know, they right. they have huge lists and they are I've talked to a few of them who are like, you know, our numbers are gonna drop if we if we take them and I'm and I'm with you. That's a good thing. It's if they're just looking, they can look on Facebook. Right. And that's the other thing too is about your Facebook page. So and if they're on your website, you are what's called the controller of the data because you own that website. Everything on there is you. You're the one that's gonna take the brunt of anything if it does happen when you're on facebook facebook is the controller of that so while they're on facebook and on your page you're not you don't have to worry about anything on facebook that's all facebook mark zuckerberg can take care of himself and (laughs) as soon as they click on something they'll go back to your website you're back in control then that's a good differential but i i am also thinking that that probably could change and be very gray like that could be a very gray area if they if they go from one to another and we don't catch that that's where they came from. So I still want to caution everybody to like just be yeah. careful with like however you do it. I do think it's important to know though if if it is your website, if it is your page of any kind, you know, it it you're still responsible for your followers. You're still responsible, you know, to to be good to them and to make sure that you know you are you are absolutely taking good care of them oh 
Now we've got three of us. <laughs> This time you just booted me right out. I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> well, I'm thinking they don't want three of us. Two is bad enough. <laughs> That's <too> much funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am really, really impressed with, like, the amount of things that you know about um, that subject and about just techie things. How can people get connected with you? Like, if there's someone that's a rock star watching how can they get connected with you? And if there's just princesses watching, <laughs> you know, just normal everyday princesses. <laughs> well, I am over at rockvision.com and you can always find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash rockvision. I love it. I love the name. Now tell me, because I think I messed up the name. Tell me what it means. Um, it's basically a, a word mashup for rock your ambition. Okay, see, I messed it up. I said rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're heavy metal rock star. I am. <laughs> so, so I see, I messed it up. <laughs> I messed it up completely. <laughs> no, I like everything, though. Like I, I said, my parents are both music teachers, so I had an appreciation for pretty much every kind of music. <laughs> That, and that's a good thing. Like, there are so many amazing artists. And they might not even be my flavor of the music. But, I, you know, I follow them because I think they're amazing. That's, that's another thing, too. I think you yeah. get connected to people. Because if you understand the industry, which you do, um, I hope Christy Bridges is watching. Because she's another little rock star in my world. And she she is like you. She's not afraid to, like, just go for it. She is, she's something else, but you two need to get connected. I think like it, it needs to be something that you guys work together because she's a great collaborator. I'm definitely looking for collaborations this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sexy word. I have to tell you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this and, and helping, you know, to make some sense out of all of this craziness. We definitely want to, help those who you know follow us to not get caught with big fines or just from not understanding or not knowing so i appreciate you bringing clarity to it thank you so much for having me i'm actually starting to really like talking about this just because i'm learning so much about it <laughs> <laughs> well thank you and thank you for your super techie powers that you have too <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, Nancy. If you guys are watching, um, be sure and get connected to Nancy at rockvision.com or rockvision um, business page on Facebook. She is amazing. And if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. You can let us know if you're watching by replay, put a hashtag replay. Um, but you really want to pay attention to her words and what she's talking about. Thank you guys so much for coming on with us today and being with us. This is Kim White with the My Sexy Business team. We're here to help you create sexy businesses for sexy lives like Nancy's. <laughs>